When it comes to sim racing, the racing line is an assist we have all used at some point in our lives. But did you know that it doesn't always show you the quickest way around the circuit? Here at Veloce, we have come up with five tips to help you race without the racing line and be quicker than your mates. Step one, learn the circuits. The racing line is a guide and that's all it should be used for. Unlike rally games, you don't have the spotter telling you the next corner is a super tight, blind, uphill hairpin right. So using a racing line on your first few laps of a brand new circuit is totally fine. But what if you are on a sim where a racing line is not an option? Simple, take your time around the track, drive at 50%, learn what corners follow each other and where's best to position your car. Everyone is different, so don't worry if it takes you a while to learn each track. The important thing is to be comfortable that you know where you are going before you move on to the next step. Step two, marker boards. So you know where you're going, congratulations. Now let's focus on braking. This is where you're going to gain the most time on your competitors. The later you break, the quicker you will be, but you also increase the risk of overshooting the corner. So it's vital that you are confident in when you have to break. This is where the racing line can let you down. The racing line doesn't necessarily show the latest braking zone. If anything, it makes you break super early. So the risk of overshooting a corner is zero, which is great until you get overtaken in every single braking zone. So how do I know when to break? I hear you ask. In almost every corner that has a braking zone, you see marker boards on the opposite side to the apex. These tell you how many meters away you are from the corner and usually consist of a 50, 100 and 150 meters. They can go up to 300, but that depends on how long the straight is and how long your braking zone is. These work as a good reference point on where to start braking. However, marker boards aren't the only references you can use. In fact, you can use any static objects like walls, trees, and curbs, for example. What you don't want to be using though are things like shadows because time of day and weather can always change these. Step three, pushing the boundaries. Now we have a basic understanding of brake marker points, it's time to find the latest point we can slam on those brakes while still making the corner. The way to do this is to push that braking zone as much as you possibly can. You start by taking your original braking marker you picked out earlier. From there, brake a little bit later every single lap. If you make the corner, great. Now brake later next time around. This process will carry on and on until you either brake too late, missing the corner, or you realize you didn't even need to brake at all. Step four, know the car's limits. Now that we've fixed the braking, how do you know when to get back on the throttle? The racing line hinders you from getting on the power as early as you can. It keeps the line red or yellow for as long as possible, which wouldn't be too bad if one corner led to another, but if you're heading onto a long straight, you want to maximize the speed at the end of it. So getting on the power as soon as possible is crucial here. This all comes down to how much grip you have in your car. Go too early and you'll run wide on exit. Go too late, you'll make the corner, but you might as well wave as your competitors drive past you. Get to know the car you're going to be driving. How much can you push it or do you need to be more gentle? Every car is different and handles differently. And the only real way to get this correct brings us to our final point. Step five, practice, practice, practice. It goes without saying, the more you practice, the better you're going to be when it comes to sim racing and racing esports. It's impossible to jump on these games or simulations and immediately be as quick as the top guys. But that doesn't mean that you can't be. If you're willing to work hard and put in the laps, then who knows, we might see you on the top step of the podium in future events. So there you have it, everything that you need to know to be able to drive F1 2019 without a racing line. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you with another Esports 101. Track extend? Don't know what you're on about. I'd never track extend. He says whilst cutting the corner. <laughs> Just ignore that. Cow, cut that out. Do not add that in. Oh, I'm being hunted down, Tom. Cow, can you put in some sad music for effect? <laughs>